The goal of this video is to show you how you can make a perfect loop using noise textures. So this could be any noise texture, just like a Voronoi texture or a noise texture. Um, this is like smooth noise or Berlin noise, something. So what we're looking at right here is one dimensional noise. So it's only along the X axis that we get different noise values. And What I want to show you here is, so you can see it's set to 1D, that changing these values doesn't do anything yet. Now if we go to 2D, so we get the same thing, but now if I change the Y values, you can see that the noise changes. And if I make a very small change in the Y value, so let's set this to 0.01, you'll see that it will have a very small change on the um, total X values. And this is the idea of smooth noise. And so if I change it very little, then right here it won't change as much. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these Y values actually correspond to the Y values in well, the 3D viewport, right? So, if um, if I connect this Y to this one, and we'll now use the object coordinates or the Y position in this empty, and you can see that it's already two dimensional. So, if I move this around along the X axis, nothing is changing because it's only using the Y. But if I move it along the Y axis, you can see what it really means to change the Y value is just to move around in 2D noise space to get to the to that specific seed. So each coordinate is a unique seed. And the way this noise texture works is that if the seed values are very close to each other, then the change in noise will also be very small. So now, obviously, we can go one dimension higher. So let me make this a full plane. If I now instead plug the Z value into here and then change it to 3D, you can see that when I move it in the Z direction, the noise pattern also changes. Because now we're slicing a part of the three dimensional noise space. And if I go back here and select our plane, we can maybe turn it into a cube. So let's first delete these, and just use our normal. Now, um, so let's go into edit mode. It's not a perfect cube, but it will do. So now you can see I've set it to position. That means if I move the cube around, it will be the same as um, moving around in 3D noise space. And now you can really see what it means that each point in the space has a unique random seed value. And then there's one thing more we can do. We can go to 4D. And really the only thing that this does is it allows us to change the random value for each point. So I imagine if there's like a fourth dimension which you can move around in. And we'll just pretend that um, maybe the X coordinate of this cube here represents the fourth dimension. Then moving this in the fourth dimension has the same effect as changing the seed value of this cube. The only problem is that since I'm moving not in the fourth dimension within the X direction, it's also affecting the X location of this one. So a more, a better way would be to just 
move it by hand. Now, why is this important? Because sometimes when you want to create a perfectly looping animation, what you would do is to go maybe to frame zero and then set um, the W value to zero and then go to frame 60, set it to maybe one and then go back to frame 120 and set it back to zero. And it would loop perfectly, but the problem is that you're repeating values because you're getting the same noise values um, at the end and at the start and everywhere in between. So you're basically just moving back and forth. But it would be nicer if you could get a unique noise value every time, but still have a perfect loop. And so far, since we only have four dimensions, this is not going to work in having three dimensional noise patterns. But if you have just 2D noise, then this will work because now we have two dimensions or two degrees of freedom that we can use to change um, our noise. So we can change the Z and the W. And the idea is that we're going to move around in a circle in four dimensional space, a circle in the Z and W plane. And the way we're going to do that is just using um, some basic math. So let's add in a math node and also an input value node. So if we change these to cosine and sine, what this will do is if we pretend that this is an angle, this will give us the X coordinate of that point on the unit circle and the Y coordinate of that point on the unit circle. So if this goes from zero to one, uh, 360 degrees, which is two pi in radians. This will make a complete circle. So we can plug this X into the Z value and this W right here uh, and this sign into the W. And now by changing this from zero all the way to two pi, we get a complete loop and the noise values will be different each time. So for so if you set a keyframe here and another keyframe at frame 120 and set this to two times pi. Now this will loop perfectly. Let's also set the interpolation to linear. As you can see, it's moving very quickly and usually you don't want this. So one thing we can do is to add in another math node and change this to multiply. And that way we, we can change the radius of our circle. So the smaller the radius, the less we're actually moving around. So the less our values will change. So now the radius is 0 0.5 instead of one. And you can see that's moving less. And if you just look here, you can't tell when the bottom side, when, the, when we're repeating because it's looping perfectly. So if you go for a radius of 0 0.1, the values will change even less. Now, one thing that you could do in addition to that is, for example, you could change this to be 0 0.5. And now you get an ellipse, which basically means that um, the, it isn't going to change as fast at each point. So you can see that it's doing something like this because the, 
a circle is just perfectly round like that, but an ellipse would go like something like this, right? Well, sorry for my bad drawing skills, but I think you get the point. Let's remove this. And then another thing you could do if you aren't satisfied with which values you're getting, um, you could in the end just take this for example and change it to add and now you're changing the center of the circle so you can change these till you get a nice noise value and then it will again loop perfectly it changes to 0 0.1 as well So that's the basic idea by by using a, a for if you want to use a noise loop. So if, for example, if you change this to a Voronoi texture and set it to 4D, you can see that the same thing just works. Now I have some videos. So the next time what we'll be doing is something like this, which uses this. So as you can see, you don't get the same pattern until you've repeated at least once. Or this one, which is a bit slower, but it's the same thing. And finally, um, just to show you what it really means to move around. So as you can see, we are just moving around in two dimensions or tracing a circle. And then the center, for example, if you just look at one point, the values keep changing the whole time. But because we're moving around in a circle, it guarantees that the start value will be the same as the end value. And the reason it uh, flickers at the end is because of compression. So I still have to figure out how to save it correctly so that it is an actual loop because now it's dropped some frames at the end. It looks like. So yeah, and this is without using a 2D noise. So as you can see, it goes to some value and then it goes back to the starting value which is different from just having different values all throughout and then just ending up at the same value you started with. So, and then another future video I was look, working on is this, which is with the ray marching, which again doesn't use a 2D noise loop because we're using 3D noise, so we can't really use it. For the hexagons, I could have used um, a 2D noise loop. So yeah, thanks for watching.